Well, in particle physics, it must be the discovery of the Higgs particle. Now, th that's um, it's interesting when I talk to people about that, they say, well, you've just discovered another particle. There's several reasons why it's very important. One is that it completes, and I'll, I'll qualify that in a minute, but it completes what we call the standard model of particle physics. Um, it's a theory that's been around for a long time, initially proposed in the 60s, refined throughout the 70s and 80s. Um, and so it was the missing link, the thing that gives mass to the other particles. So that's one side. It, uh, many people have said it means that we really understand physics and quantum field theory very well, because as a prediction, the idea that there's this thing, this condensate, if you like, something that condensed out into empty space in the very early stages, less than a billionth of a second after the Big Bang, and gives mass to the particles through their, the particles' interactions with that field, um, that, that's interesting. If, if you can predict that, it means you understand a lot about field theory. And you could predict it from advance, even though we had never seen a particle of the type the Higgs was. That's well, quite remarkable. Th this is the, the second point. It is a, the, it's a completely different kind of particle, a so-called scalar particle, so a fundamental scalar field. This is the first example. And we always talked about cosmology. There are other examples, potentially, of where they may exist in nature. One is inflation. This, uh, this exponential expansion of the universe before the Big Bang, if you use the Big Bang as being the time when the universe was hot and dense, if that's the semantics you yep. choose, uh, that could be a, a field of the same character as the Higgs. Similarly, people speculate dark energy, the accelerating expansion of the universe, of course, for which you got the Nobel Prize for noticing and measuring. Again, people speculate that could be a field such as this. So I, I think that's very interesting in itself. That, the interesting thing now, of course, is to see whether indeed that's what it is. It, it probably is a Higgs particle. All the measurements we've made so far at the Large Hadron Collider point in that direction. But we haven't fully characterised it yet by any means. And there are different theories that predict different sorts of Higgs particles, multiple Higgs particles. There's a theory called the, the MSSM, the Minimally Supersymmetric Standard Model, in which there are five Higgs particles. Uh, could it be one of those? It Possibly. So, so the, the challenge at LHC now, when it switches on in spring 2015, is to go and characterise that particle precisely, measure its interactions with the other particles, and see precisely what it is. I mean, could the Higgs particle actually be directly involved in either of the two um, cases we've talked about exponential growth of the universe? You talked about inflation, where you mm. had this Mexican potential and it drove this incredible expansion and we've talked about the same thing again with dark energy yeah. could the Higgs particle as discovered so far be involved in either of those or do you need something else with similar properties but not exactly the same it's, it's, a, it's a brilliant question this and I, I when I discuss with my the theory friends uh, some of them will say there are people trying to build some kind of unified picture in which the Higgs may play that role it's it's the wrong energy scale if you like the, the, the Higgs is a, is a mystery in the way that it behaves, the way it interacts with space-time. Uh, it, it's certainly, at first sight, way too big mm -hmm. to be dark energy. Orders of many orders of magnitude too large. But it's also many orders of magnitude too small to be the thing that caused inflation, uh, or drove inflation, if indeed they're of the same character. So nobody knows, but it's interesting that it's the, of the right sort of thing. So there are people who are trying to build some kind of unified theory of those. I mean, I think the, these are the big the big questions where particle physics and, and cosmology are interacting now. I mean, it's, it's how. We're talking about a quantum theory of gravity, probably. We're, we're talking about how things like the Higgs interact with space-time. If you just plug that into Einstein's equations and see what happens, then the universe just <laughs> explodes, basically. So it's one of the big questions in physics. Why doesn't it do that? So we also have some other questions about physics that we've discussed uh, that overlap with particle physics. For example, we know that the universe is full of the atoms, the baryons that we're made out of. Uh, the antimatter part of us doesn't seem to be here. Mm -hmm. We have 10 to the 9 photons in the universe for every atom. What's going on there? Why <laughs> is there that asymmetry? You have a complete theory but it doesn't predict there's any asymmetry. It's, it's absolutely right. We, we call this CP violation in, in particle physics. So we've seen differences in behavior between matter and antimatter um, in what's called the B system, for example. So there was a big experiment at, at Stanford for many years called BARBAR -Bar that, that did precision measurements on, the, on these things called B mesons. Uh, and so we see a difference in behavior, but it's way too small 
to produce, as you said, the, the matter-antimatter asymmetry in the universe and this huge excess of photons over the other particles that we see. So again, that's not understood. Some people speculate that it's something to do with the neutrino sector. So it's a, 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 that's the other big discovery, perhaps, in my scientific lifetime. Uh, these particles called neutrinos, so three of the 12 fundamental particles of matter, have mass. Now that wasn't known when I first started in physics and it's known uh, now. Um, how they get their mass is a tremendously interesting area. Uh, in the standard model you can just write down that they interact with the Higgs field but they have tiny masses compared to the other particles so it looks potentially unnatural and so there are other theories um, that, that so-called seesaw mechanisms and things like this, different theories about how the neutrinos can get their mass and there are experiments looking at um, trying to probe that area now. So, so the neutrino sector is another very poorly understood piece of particle physics. Be because they interact so weakly, they're very difficult to observe. Mm -hmm. Now, if we look forward about 10 years, maybe, as a, a short-term horizon, how do you see experimental particle physics contributing to our understanding of cosmology over the next 10 years? Is it going to do much to help us solve all these puzzles that baffle us at the moment? I, I think the obvious where place it could is dark matter. So, so dark matter, as you know, there's five times as much dark matter as matter. Undoubtedly that's true, but it, as you probably discussed in the course, Indeed. I suspect. Yep. So, so uh, and it looks like it's a new, some kind of particle, probably, although there are other theories. And we have theories, which, which actually, um, I think before the Large Hadron Collider switched on, um, most people would have favoured so so-called supersymmetric theories, where essentially you double the number of fundamental particles, and the lightest supersymmetric particle can be a very strong candidate for dark matter. Um, those theories tend to have more Higgs particles as well, five in the case of the so-called MSSM. Um, it, I think it may have been a surprise to people that it looks like um, the standard model stands up on its own with one Higgs particle, and that causes theoretical problems. And I think it, it, most theoretical physicists, I would guess, and that's an interesting word, isn't it? Mode, but I suspect most would have said, no, I think we're going to find supersymmetry. Now, we haven't yet, um, that, but it's not ruled out. But large areas of the parameter space are now ruled out at LHC. But it's still possible, undoubtedly. And that would be the, you know, the great discovery. It would be a bigger discovery than the Higgs particle. Uh, yeah, my colleague uh, Frank Wilczek, who's been a, a lot to do with developing those, yeah. uh, is still willing to, you know, I think, take bets that they, Susie will be uh, seen eventually. I yeah. have to admit it's not completely obvious to me, but I'm always a skeptic in these things. Well, it does, but I mean, it's a natural thing. It's a, it's a, a space-time symmetry that hasn't been used, Frank would yep. say, would it be right? The only one, so this spin symmetry. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, also, it, it mathematically is very pleasing. It saves you from a lot of the problems that the standard model Higgs particle generates mathematically as well. So it looks like it's something that, that should be there. If you, if you like the aesthetics of, of fundamental particle physics. And do you think we'll know one way or the other in the next 10 years once know. the uh, LHC goes up to higher energies and runs again? Well, so. we don't know how massive these particles are. Um, mm. To do the job, that the aesthetically nice job, or the, the mathematically pleasing job, they, they should be within reach, you would think, of LHC. So we need precision measurements now of, of the Higgs. As you say, we need more energy, but also more what we call luminosity, because particle physics is a statistical mm -hmm. science. So the more protons we can collide together, the more chance we have of seeing these massive particles. If yeah, they because exist. they're rare events, so you need to have a lot of collisions to see them. Yes, so and that's the main... Up I mean, the, the LHC is going up in energy, but it's also going up a lot in number of collisions per second. So do you think it's going to be the most likely to come from the LHC or what about these detre direct detection events where we put a uh, thing down a, a detector down in a mine and wait for a year and hope for a couple direct collisions that light up the detector yeah sure because I mean, the thing about the dark matter particles is they, they must interact only by the weak nuclear force you, surely that's the case so therefore they will in the same way that neutrinos collide occasionally and we have solar neutrino detectors uh, like Kamiokande in Japan, mm -hmm. uh, you can have dark matter detectors. And, and th there are many of those there, and, and the hope is that one of the dark matter particles will collide. And that's an equally plausible way of seeing what more plausible, if they're very massive and outside the energy reach of LHC, that's the only way we're going to see them. So there's, there's the, 
two sides of physics i suppose it's the, the it shows the difference between astronomy and particle physics in a way because astronomy is you look at nature that's one way of doing it and the other way is, is more lab based you create your conditions yourself well we'd like to put a black hole in the lab but we haven't quite got the funding for that yeah, yeah well well you never know with the quantum yeah. theory of gravity you might be a, <laughs> you might be able to do it you can drop the Planck scale down a bit with extra dimensions or something who knows we'll see <laughs> it seems like we're playing with fire when we get there <laughs> indeed